Hey everyone, welcome back. So I'm back with another gameplay highlight video on what I think is one of the best eShop deals out there, which is Blossom Tales The Sleeping King. Now there's one tiny issue that I do want to go over just before we get started. I'm going to be doing this as spoiler free as possible, but at the same time managing to show you the awesome dungeon gameplay. Now how I plan on doing this is I've actually started a new game, made my way about halfway through the game, so I'm going to be showing you a dungeon. It won't be the first one, it won't be the last one, it's a dungeon somewhere in the middle. And also, we probably won't be doing more than 10 to 15 minutes of the dungeon. Basically, to make sure that even once you get there, at least 75% or more of the dungeon is still going to be new and fresh for you. Now, just in case you're totally against seeing any puzzles getting solved, well then maybe you shouldn't watch this gameplay, but I promise you I chose a specific dungeon to make it as easy as possible and not ruin any of this game for anyone. So getting started here, I'm going to take a few seconds because one of the great things I find about Blossom Tales is how it really creates a universe and a little world in itself, just like the old classic Zelda games did. And if you didn't know, Blossom Tales is a top-down dungeon crawler, very alike Zelda, but that has created enough difference to really make, I find, its own identity. But basically, any time you get back into the game, no matter where you are in the game, you have this introductory scene that is basically the grandpa telling the story to his kids. Because the adventure you're living through is actually a story that a grandpa is basically telling to both of his uh, grandkids. So basically you get a little introduction and it really changes based on where you are in the storyline so it's a really nice little touch to this game that really makes you love this world now once we get into this game uh i started in the overworld we're actually going to see how we can unlock the entrance to this dungeon it is not a huge puzzle um but basically i just want to show you the overworld first how basically beautiful it is in pixel art once again, yes, it is very reminiscent of Zelda, but as you're going to see if you do pick up this game, they do a lot to make it their own. Uh, although really using the Zelda principles to really showcase the gameplay. Now, first of all, we have to go in our sub menu here. We're going to be grabbing our bow and we are going to be shooting an arrow. If this guy can stop shooting at me, whoops, in the other direction. Now, also what's interesting in this game is if you look at the top, obviously we have heart containers like Zelda, but rather than having item numbers, like a number of arrows that you can shoot or a number of bombs and having to pick up more, everything works with like a magic meter. So if I shoot an arrow here, if you see that green meter at the top left, it basically just went down a bit because I used up some magic. Now we're going to shoot an arrow up here. This is going to light a further beacon up the top here. And then basically all you need to do is light all the beacons with uh, your arrows to be able to uh, basically open the dungeon entrance. Sorry, need to get a little calibrated here because I'm talking to all of you at the same time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You light all of these uh, fire emblems and then basically the dragon is going to wake up and that will be the entrance to the blazing caverns. Uh, or Boiling Caverns, sorry about that. Now, once we get here, uh, basically make sure to touch any of these that you see. These are fast travels, so you can actually fast travel and teleport to any of these that you've come across before. Really nice touch in the game, meaning that even if you need to backtrack, it is not a hassle. You can basically automatically teleport to every point on the map, something a lot of games oversee. If you saw my review on Baldo, that was a huge issue. There just wasn't enough fast teleportation. So here, for at random points in the story, like you see the grandpa will come in and basically give a little bit of dialogue and it sets the stage for where you are in the adventure and sort of what to expect and what you're going to be doing. Now, um, basically at any point in the adventure, by the way, you can swap whichever items you want equipped, but the bow is a really good one to have in this dungeon because these fire guys, you don't want to get too close. Uh, you can still take them out with the sword, I just like to, sometimes you'll see in some of the future puzzles, uh, it'll be easier to sort of take them out ahead of time from a distance. Now, what I love about this dungeon and why I chose this one is you'll see a lot of the first puzzles are reaction based. They are not actual puzzles, it's more like traps or booby traps that you have to make your way through. So, that's why I said this dungeon, I tried to make it as spoiler free as possible, was a super good place to start. 
and at the same time you get to see the awesome dungeon gameplay. Now, control-wise, it controls very close to Zelda. The only difference is that if you do hit the attack button multiple times, there is a sort of combo that is unleashed by your character. And it, it is a, a nice little touch that Zelda didn't have. However, they did copy. You can charge your sword down and then do the uh, rotating strike from like Zelda once again. But ultimately, it is a really nice game. Controls very well. A little bit floatier than Zelda. The controls aren't quite as tight. Tight, but I do think that this is just a reality that they made this game to be controlled with an analog stick rather than a D-pad. You can use the D-pad, but they did, I think, think of using more the analog stick for this game. So ultimately, that's why the controls do feel a little different than a traditional Zelda. Now, you see what I mean? These, This is what I mean, that the first sort of part of this dungeon isn't puzzle-based, it's reaction-based. Uh, I mean... You have to basically get through these moving platforms, which will basically turn into lava. And I'm doing really bad here because I am concentrating on explaining the gameplay. You break pots, there's hearts in them, you get you can fill up your health. Once again, very nice overall gameplay. So we got through, like I said, that first little section there. Unfortunately, the devil guy is back. I'm a little low on health, so we're not going to fight him. Um, I might take a potion in a few seconds here. You can grab potions in this game. There's a lot. Uh, so the gameplay, I would say, I did find overall easier than Zelda. Uh, the adventure lasts, by the way, about... Like, if you could do a straight playthrough, I think you could do it in like six or seven hours without doing any of the side quests. But like Zelda, what I love about this game and what I think makes it one of the best clone-type dungeon crawlers out there is that they did the same thing in the overworld you have so many subquests that you can do that basically even at the end of the game if you wanted to you'd easily probably have another five to six hours to add to your playtime if you wanted to get all the little secrets and that's something i think a lot of the dungeon crawlers nowadays don't put a lot of energy on and should because i remember when i was playing like a link to the past one of the best things because back then we didn't have the internet, so you couldn't see gameplay ahead of time, was figuring out all those little secrets by yourself. Sometimes the reward was gold, a rupee, a piece of a heart uh, container. But you know what? When you found those secrets, you felt so accomplished. And Blossom Tales does that very well as well. So we're going to move through the dungeon here. We're going to try to make our way to the as far as we can. Like I said, I'm focusing more on... Uh, just showing you guys the game then like tight gameplay so please do not uh, get worried if I am taking hits you can easily do these sections without taking hits if you take your time I am trying to speed run it a bit so that we can get further into the dungeon within a 10 to 15 minute time frame once again don't worry without spoiling any of the major puzzles of this game but like I said, so far these aren't really puzzles. As I said, these are like reaction-based sections. So this you just wait till the flame since they're backwards. And you'll be able to make your way pretty easily through this one. But I know if you're seeing the gameplay so far, but anyway, I really enjoy it. If you like Zelda-type games, you will definitely enjoy this one. And like I said, once again, it really creates a beautiful world of its own. It's not a pure copy. It just uses a lot of the principles. And look, if you're going to copy principles, why not copy from one of the best game series out there for dungeon crawling? So we made through that section. It unlocks the next. Now, we can actually jump off of these platforms here. So it's really nice. They don't make you backtrack for nothing. Once again, nice little attention to details in this game. And you'll see they're everywhere. That's why I say it's so well built. The only thing is it has maybe half the running time of a normal Zelda game, which is generally more in the 15 to 20 hour range. Uh, although, although, like I said, if you do all the subquests, you will get a decent amount of extension to your gameplay. Now, once again, still a more reaction based sequence here. We have to wait till all the sections appear and we make our way through. It is going to be a little slow moving because we just can't rush this section. But you know what? Nonetheless, we're getting pretty close probably to where we're going to start ending the video. I think you're seeing a lot. I think what I'm giving you as a description as well is helping you, you know, maybe know about the parts of the game we won't see in this gameplay. 
and over why at overall why at three dollars and 74 cents for what you're getting here is amazing and you see i uh, pressed the wrong button there sorry about that i was looking for my arrows and we will uh continue on a little bit here i want to get to the sort of first puzzle room we're going to solve one puzzle room just so that you can see that when you get to the puzzles once again they are good puzzles not overly difficult in my opinion but if you're used to zelda you'll probably recognize them right away if you're new to this type of gameplay i would actually say blossom tales is a better place to start than a zelda game because it's a slightly easier it'll get you used to the puzzle design and then if you would want to try like on the nintendo switch eShop, a link to the past for example if you have an online subscription it's free we just got a key so we'll need this obviously to access a different part of the dungeon but yeah, if you want to go to A Link to the Past after, this game is actually a really nice setup to getting into the mechanics in a shorter format. So I would even say that like a young kid, preteen, like something around like the 11 age, this is a really good game to give them if you want to get them into like retro style classic gameplay. So here we've just opened the last section here took a hit there so we can just get there as quick as possible and basically we will be moving into our first puzzle room and like i said i do think this is where we're going to end the game to not ruin it for anyone basically oh yeah i forget you can't touch any of the red squares so basically if you see there's some brown sections on the ground well, guess what we have to do? Yes, we have to get the blocks onto those brown sections without touching any of the red ones, because or else it resets the puzzle. So basically, we're going to push that one there. We're going to push this one first here. Basically, the only reason you would have to reset this puzzle is sometimes if you push the wrong block first, you might not be able to solve it. And then basically, boom, we close it. All the squares become green and we can move on to our next room and each dungeon will as once again its inspiration have a theme so you'll see there will be a lot of these block pushing puzzle rooms in this uh, this particular dungeon but overall this is where we're gonna end the gameplay because like I said I want to make sure that I'm keeping this as spoiler free for all of you trust me there's at least 75% of this dungeon left after this there's a huge boss at the end well designed a lot of fun gameplay there. Now, just like last time, let me know what you thought of this kind of video. Did you like it? Do you like Blossom Tales? Do you think you're going to pick it up? And also, the most important, don't forget to drop in the comments which games you'd like to see in future highlights. Please look at the eShop Deals videos to make sure that they're games that are on those lists. And I will for sure be doing more highlight videos in the future. Now, just on our way out, don't forget that if you did like this type of video, to please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and activate the notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.